Ah, oh, from New York, New York, you are listening to Extra Time, driven by Continental from my in-laws office in Vacaville, California. I'm Andrew Weeby with my partners in soccer. I know that was confusing, but I can't leave the New York, New York behind, guys. It is Charlie Davies, David Goss. It's Monday, June 1st, 4.30 p.m. Eastern. I think that's important uh, right now to just tell you when and uh, what time we are recording this show. Guys, how you doing? How you feeling? What's up? Uh, not great. It's been a long week or so in life. Obviously, of course, quarantine and everything, and then what's been going on in the United States and around the world, but what's been going on forever that's been you know shoved into people's faces, which is good, and we'll talk about it. I will say this, though. Andrew, as you mentioned, you're now out in California at your in-laws, so we'll set up a, cr- a Morse code of blinking so you can let us know if you need us to uh, come get to you at any point over the next few months. Well, I'm I'm with my in-laws as well in Cape Cod, and uh, <laughs> this is our fifth year. I want to say coming out here to to live in this live here for the summer, fourth year, um, and I'll never you'll never see a red flag or blinking lights over here. It's it's great for the kids. I mean, they're in heaven here. Um, so tr- just trying to be the best father and husband I can be out here. Uh, but right now, it's it's tough. It's tough to, yeah. to put all my my heart and focus into being a parent and a husband with everything that's going on. I just want to say that I do really love being out here, despite the blinking that I threw up right there. I mean, like, it's it's beautiful. The weather's great. We're going to have our second son here still looking for names. So if you've got uh, an MLS-themed one, hit us up and do maternity. But uh, New York City just wasn't hacking it for us right now for a lot of obvious reasons. Uh, we're not going to talk about soccer today, and you may have noticed that in the title of the podcast, the description. There's just no avoiding the obvious. Uh, the despair, the anger, the injustice, the impression, the upheaval that we're all witnessing in our country and, and abroad, as you said as well, Dave. The images you've seen on Loop the past five days and counting, uh, they can be shocking, they can be inspiring, they can inspire or make you feel a lot of different things. We're starting today with these three words, Black Lives Matter. And if if that makes you uncomfortable, it's all the more reason to keep listening to this podcast. George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, so many names, not enough time, too many names. We are paid to cover Major League Soccer. That's what we normally do on this podcast. But if you've listened to the show, you know that we don't remove our humanity from it. We don't remove ourselves. We're people too. I hope soccer comes back soon. But honestly, I don't know how you guys feel, but it feels really small right now in the grand scheme. And I'm, I'm tired. I'm exhausted. And if I'm exhausted, a white man who's enjoyed just about every privilege there is to enjoy in this society, I can be honest about that. I hope we're all being honest about that. Imagine how black folks feel, how they felt, how near constant trauma, violence, discrimination, how that's been passed down generation by generation. Nobody spared, no end in sight. Imagine that burden. Now, imagine the country that's killing you and subjecting you to second-class citizenry is gaslighting you, too. We're seeing a lot of that these days. Imagine it's using every institution to keep you, your family, your friends, your community, the people that you care about. Think about the people that you care about under the boot of oppression and deny you what the rest of us who just happen to have less melatonin basically take for granted here. What I'm telling you, anybody listening to this, what I'm telling myself Try to imagine the black experience in this country. If you haven't lived it, I haven't. You cannot. And that's part of this. Admitting that you don't know, that I don't know, that it's time to listen. And I am listening. I stand for justice. I want to stand for justice. I have to be better. We must change this world. We must change ourselves. Before we sort of open this thing up and, um, you know, I cherish every second that I have with you guys on this show and just in general, before we sort of share of ourselves Uh, Here is the statement from Major League Soccer. The entire Major League Soccer family is deeply saddened and horrified by the senseless murder of George Floyd. We stand united with the black community through our country and share in the pain, anger, and frustration. We hear you. We see you. We support you. We are committed to use our voices and the platform of our league, our clubs, and our players to continue to champion equality and social justice. Some things that you should check out after you get done listening to this podcast. Kai Kumar, CJ Sapong had a really informative, powerful uh, Instagram Live that they did this morning. I watched the whole hour. Go check it out. Ja'Cory Hayes up in Minnesota. He wrote an op-ed 
at their website. I can't recommend that enough. Justin Morrow, Eichel Parra, Julian Gressel, Eric Valentin, Jeff Adanella, Kamal Miller, Sasha Kleshton, Mark Anthony K. So many others in this league. So many of our players are making their voices heard. We will retweet those from the Extra Time account. Go read those. Go internalize those. Go think about those. And uh, Now I'm getting out of the way. Charlie, you got the floor, man. And, and that's, I think, how we'll do this. Uh, you know, yeah. I, I, tell us how you're feeling. You know, I had a, a deep conversation with my wife yesterday. Um, and it was the first time we really ever discussed race and racism in this country. Um, you know, my father immigrated to the United States at the age of 18 from Gambia. Um, he's as dark as they come from, from Gambia and in West Africa. And my mother is Irish, uh, you know, full Irish, hundred percent, um, but born in, in New Hampshire and growing up in New Hampshire as, um, you know, a, a mixed race kid, which I was always considered black growing up, um, was, uh, was not easy. Um, you know, I've always been conditioned from my, from my, my parents just to not let racism tear me down. Um, and, and I've been racially abused my whole life. Uh, as, as long as I can remember, remember being called the N word countless times, whether it was, uh, to hurt me, trying to hurt me personally, uh, while I'm playing the game, while I'm out walking around at school, whatever it may be, I was chased by, um, uh, skinheads, white supremacists in sixth grade. I'll never forget that who were in a car, uh, probably six, five of them packed in a car, uh, with, with barbed wire bats and nails. Um, and, uh, you know, I got away on foot, but th they, they tried to get me. Um, and that was, you know, one of the moments where I think I really felt that racism is, is a, is a real issue, um, as a young kid, but I didn't let that bother me. I always bounce. I let things bounce off me. And that's me personally. I, I, I never let it be known that words were hurting me. I was never going to make myself vulnerable because vulnerability meant weakness to me. So I could never let it stop me from keep moving. And I always knew if I prove myself, I'm always going to show that I'm above it. But that's not everyone. I've come across people who are deeply affected by one word. So, you know, if, if you're growing up in New Hampshire and you're you're saying things to 100 black kids and 99 of those black kids aren't affected by it. You say it to that what that last kid, the hundredth kid, and it hurts him and he reacts in a different way, whether it's a physical altercation, or he just berates you verbally saying you were not allowed to say that and how hurtful it was, that person's going to say, how is that possible? I said this same exact thing to 99, 99 other black kids and they didn't have a problem with it or they didn't mention it because maybe they, those 99 kids internalize it like me. They didn't work going to let it show that it bothered them, but that's not everybody. And I think that's tough for people to understand that everyone reacts to it differently. Everybody handles racism differently. I'm, I'm to this day, I was never going to let it tear me down and tear me apart. But after this George Floyd, um, the Amy Cooper incident, George Floyd, now I'm, I'm deeply, deeply saddened. And I have this, this burning desire inside to, to really figure out how can we, can we prevent this from, from, being our future. I have twin boys, one that looks exactly like me, dark skin, the other more like my wife who has a lighter skin. Are they going to face racism directly or through me because I'm a black, their black father? That that worries me now. I didn't think I'd have to think about that. Growing up as a kid, I thought as I got older, we weren't seeing the KKK walking around. We weren't seeing racist acts. It was, it was, it wasn't as abundant. I thought we were getting better as 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 society, as culture. We weren't seeing that. And now it wasn't until the Charlottesville incident that I that I I, I realized racism hasn't gone away and racism isn't dead. It's very much alive. And now people think they have a platform that they can show outwardly that they don't like people because of the color of their skin. And that's 
that's tough. That's that's a tough pill to swallow. That I, I I struggle with trying to go about my day every day now just to be a, a great father and a great husband without thinking in the back of my mind every second, where where are we going with this? All these protests. We have players, current MLS players, we're out protesting right now. What what's gonna happen in a month down the line, two months down the line? Are we going to have change or is is this a moment in time that's just going to be forgotten? That's that's where I struggle right now. Um, it, it's very difficult. It's a difficult, difficult. I'm I'm really grappling with with all this on the inside. Yeah, Charlie. Um, thanks for what you've said, uh, and I I feel a lot of what you're feeling, not all of it, and I don't have the same experience as you, which I think is one of the things that I love not just about the show that we do, but about Major League Soccer and the people that we, the fans we interact with and everyone is, this is a place where people who have a similar passion but different backgrounds do come together. And I think in talking with people who are different than you, learning their experiences, um, taking you know a half second in their shoes, having empathy, it helps us grow as people. And it's one of the things I think it's been great today just for all of us to talk personally, just how we feel because I came into today and actually last night we'd be texted about, you know, what are we going to talk about tomorrow and how are we going to do the show? I felt numb. Um, and I kind of what you said was, I always felt like it was just going to keep getting better and everything was going to get better. And you don't see the overt racism or other forms of hate, homophobia, whatever it is, like you used to. And the world was a better place. And it probably if you think about it in some weird way, it probably is but it's not nearly good enough because we started from some really terrible places. Um, and I just felt numb that everything we've done and everything we've worked for and everything we've discussed and learned as a world, it feels like every step forward is a hundred steps back. And then we fight our way back again and then it just all goes away. Um, but I, you know, it gave me a little hope hearing you here. And I think earlier today, talk about, being renewed to fight. Uh, and I don't think that's something we can lose. Uh, and I think it's something that we need to discuss, you know, in so many different communities. For me, uh, it's about being a white ally. And I don't know exactly what that means at all times, but it is our role. And it is a role to step up and say something so that you don't have to hear something inappropriate from someone because they've said it in other places. And then one time there is a black person in the room and they're like, oh, I didn't know that was inappropriate. They should have already been told that was inappropriate. They should have been taught it wasn't the right way to live. They shouldn't have ever been taught it in the beginning. But there are roles that we all have in this. Uh, and I think we all have to step up and understand that. And I feel helpless at times. Like there's so little I can do as an individual. Uh, but I don't think that's acceptable. I don't think that's acceptable for your kids. I don't think that's acceptable for Andrew's kids, for anyone, for their future. My parents fought. Um, your parents fought and we have to continue to do that. And slowly and slowly things will get better and things will get worse. And, uh, I think one of the things you mentioned is we can't forget this when, you know, a few people are put in prison or whatever because of what they did. This is systematic. This is larger. This is historical. This is in the fabric of what we do and will therefore exist until it is changed, uh, on many different levels. And I've been proud of being associated with people like you guys, uh, the things you've said over the last you know week or so, including today, and I think a lot of the players that we deal with, uh, I think we deal with a lot of special people. Uh, it's unfortunate that everyone needs to be a professor and a genius in every moment to be perfect, because if you're not, everything feels like it fails and goes away. Uh, but I don't think that's the case, and I think even if we don't do it right, all of us have to make an effort to do a little bit more uh, and to fight a little bit more and think about this stuff a little bit more. So um, one of the things that I think we all know works is organization. Uh, and that's the nature of being a soccer supporter is organizing. So to bring it back to soccer for just a half second, this is what we're good at. We all get together. We get behind a cause. We're loud. We're in people's face. We're able to bring people together across different worlds to create, you know, a common cause. And if it's rooting for Charlie down at the Azteca, but also then it has to be rooting for him out on the street and it has to be helping in those ways. And I think we have a special place because we have organizations that are set up to do this. Um, and I'd like to see more of that. But I also just think 
this was an opportunity for us to come on here and talk about how we feel. And one of the things you have to feel is you can make a difference, but you have to do something. And I, I also wanted to add, you know, the George Floyd incident as bad and as, as horrible and, and tragic as it was, that happens every year, every decade for centuries. That's been happening for centuries. Some people, so many people are, are just awakening because of that one murder, but that is, is just a drop in the bucket to how black people have been treated for centuries. And I wanted to also mention that during my time as a player in MLS, I've never felt racism. I felt like I've never had to address racism. I never felt, I've never seen it. And that is something that we can use now in the outside world, outside of sports, outside of soccer. Let's bring that same inclusivity to the rest of the world, to our friends, to our relatives, to our family, and pass it on. Let's be those people to go out and inf posit positively infect our communities, our, our neighborhoods. Because this is something that can't stop after these protests. This has to be our mission from here on out to make sure people understand that no matter what the color of your skin is, you're not going to be mistreated. And, you know, it, it's... Um, it's a it's a sad it's a sad era it's a sad time that we have to talk about racism because you feel like there's enough people that are educated to understand that that's not how life is that's not how you see people like racism was started way before america way before america but you brought all these africans over to to the united states to build America, slaves. And we still don't grasp the fact that black people are looked down upon or are frowned upon because of just the color of the skin because they were slaves once. We have to change the whole mentality, the whole way of thinking. So I'm glad to, to be on this platform and, and, and share my personal experiences with, with racism and, and how I've grown up and you know, my I remember in third grade, my first girlfriend, third grade, she told me after one week, we can't be dating anymore because my father would not accept you as my boyfriend because you're black. That was third grade. <laughs> Here, uh, I think when I when I hear what you guys are saying, and I think, I think about the risks that our society says are okay for black people. The risk of leaving your home, the risk of driving a car and perhaps being pulled over, the risk of being discriminated against in a job, the risk of seeing your loved ones harmed in some way, the risk of getting a phone call and finding out that your father has been killed at the hands of police. And, and when I think about that, I think about the risks that I'm not taking, the risks that people like me are not taking, that we aren't willing to take, that are small, that are nothing, that are saying something to a friend or a friend of a friend or an acquaintance who says something inappropriate and saying, not right. The risk of not making known to our elected officials or voting or saying it is not right that this system for centuries, as you said, Charlie, has held people down. I mean, you have people yelling about looting and rioting, and I'm not here to tell you that either of those things are right or good, but they're a distraction. The point is that our fellow citizens have experienced far worse than that, and we've accepted it. We've encouraged it. We've participated in it. We've condoned in it. We've, you know, we've profited from it for for too long. We were willing to have our our fellow citizens, other humans, people we presumably love and respect suffer these things. And we haven't done anything about it. And the point is now, not the methods, not how it's being done, not the way people are protesting. That's a distraction. That's what, that's what the people who are in power want you to think about instead of the fact that our institutions are set up to discriminate, hold people down, and in large part, harm them, whether it be imprisonment, 
whether it be the way people are policed. I mean, look at the streets. Look at what's happening. Look at the way people are, are, are being treated. Is that just? No. What would you do? What would your families do? What would your friends do if tradition dictated that you are under the boot of oppression and you can't do anything about it? And if you try to do something, you're basically gaslit. We don't know who's wrecking the destruction. We know who's on the streets. We know what they're demanding. They're demanding equality. They're demanding to be treated a certain way. They're demanding that the racist institutions that hold them down be dismantled. They're demanding that we just acknowledge that it's an issue. That's the that's the first starting point. Just acknowledge that these things are happening and they're happening for one reason. And as you said, Charlie, it's not something you can choose. You are born a certain way. I was born a certain way. And because I was born that way, I don't have to face those challenges. It's not fair. It's not equitable. And then we have we have people out here just, you know, comfortable in the privilege or are happy to hear sort of the dog whistles that are going around right now, happy to live in a society where they get all the advantages, happy to be a part of the people putting their foot on somebody else's neck. And we have to, we have, I have to go to those people. If they're in my life, if I hear it, if I see it, I have to stick my neck out. I have to say it's not okay. And I have to listen and I have to internalize and I'll never understand. I'll never know what it's like, Charlie, to be chased by a bunch of white supremacists with a bat or have a, a girlfriend say to me, I can't be with you because my dad would never approve of you for something that you can't control. I'll never know. I just have to listen. I have to internalize. I have to understand that this is generations of suffering, of trauma, of just wrong that has been soaked into people and soaked into the fabric of our country and the world. Um, and I, I also, I, I also feel for the cop, the cops in this country, because I can't tell you how many great cops I've come across. Um, cops that generally care about society and protect people and put their life on the line for others and do it in a respectful manner. Those cops are now all in jeopardy because a group of cops across the country have, have been allowed to act in a racist manner for centuries, for decades. And now they're at risk. Their lives are at risk because they were out there trying to protect people. And it's the same thing with protesters. You're saying There's a lot of protesters, people that are saying the protesters are bad. Well, I've seen a lot of protesters protect police in instances from the radicals out there who are, who are trying to cause a storm or trying to take advantage of this situation. There's protesters out there who are picking up all the, the, the glass that looters have, have broken from all these stores. They're going out and picking up the glass and the trash and trying to clean up communities. Protesters. And now I'm, I see and I hear people, I read things that protesters are bad. They're doing all these bad things. Well, I've, I, I've spoken to players who are out there protesting and out there cleaning up their communities. Where is that being talked about? Where, where are we talking about the, the great police in this country that are walking with protesters who are siding with them, who are, who are saying the same things as these protesters? Hey, I've been a part of this too, and, and I'm, not, I'm not for it. Ultimately, it's, 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 what it's, it's, I, what, it's everyone. You can, we can't let it distract us. That's that's what that's what people want. They want to distract you with the riot porn. They want to distract you with the constant images of looting. I don't want to see that anymore. That's not indicative of the people out there. It's not indicative of the problem. Focus, people. Focus on the problem. The problem is that a significant portion of our population, our brothers and sisters have been oppressed for hundreds of years and we haven't done anything. We've done we've a lot of lip service, a lot of moments like these where it seems like things are on the precipice. It hasn't changed anything. Nothing is different. Would, would, I mean, I think one of the most powerful things that and you see so much going around and you always have to think, okay, what information can I trust? You know, the idea of would you, would you switch places with, with a black person? Would you raise your hand and say, I want to be treated the exact same way? You don't. We all know you don't. Every single one of us knows that. And yet we are complicit to sit by and explain it away and say, oh, you know, the system will fix it. Oh, well, this is, you know, this is our democracy will will get this done. Well, it's not getting it done. It isn't. 
So it's time to demand it gets done. And you can't argue about the ways to change it when you've delegitimized every other attempt to do so. I don't know. I, I look, I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm learning. I don't know what to do. I feel helpless. As you said, I feel impotent. I feel impotent all the time about this. What can I do? How can I affect this? I'm one person. You know, I can, I can, my kids, I can affect them. I can definitely do that. You know, I can throw 50 bucks, a hundred bucks, the NAACP and bail funds and, you know, you know, Midway and Minneapolis to clean up the, the community and provide money to business owners. I can do that. I am doing that. I'm, I'm getting reading. I am reading. I'm talking to my friends who can educate me, who have experienced these things like you, Charlie. But this is going, this is not something that you were just going to snap our fingers and say, oh, we're good. You know, hey, here's a snappy slogan. And hey, this, we showed out for this election and we got rid of this guy. And oh, it's, it's all, no, this is constant work for the rest of your life. If you are willing to sit back and say, you know what? That's just the way it is for black people. You look yourself in the mirror. Constant work for the rest of your life. And that price is tiny. It's nothing. It's, it's infinitely small in comparison to the price that has been paid over the course of centuries and is continued to be paid. So stick your neck out. Take a risk. Tell somebody that's not appropriate. Go to your representative. This has to change. Demand it. We have to. There's no other way. I hope this is. I hope. I hope this is not. I feel broken a lot recently. I hope, and, I, and again, to repeat what I said at the beginning, I feel broken. And if I feel broken, imagine, imagine how the black community feels, has felt, will feel. Imagine that rage, that anger. Try to empathize. You will never be able to because you can't imagine it. But just try. Look at somebody else and see humanity. Look at somebody else and see your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your kid. And I yeah, was just going to add, what, I don't know what no, else to say. I was just going to add, and I think everything said has been good. It's just, you're not alone. And that's the way that people who don't agree with what we're saying want you to feel is that we are alone and we are useless. Um, we support you, the three of us here, at a minimum. Uh, if you're going to step up and say something when you hear something said wrong, the micro moments of seeing the way people operate and saying that's incorrect, you know, in your, in your jobs in your communities, whatever it is, know that people are like you agree. And there are a lot of people who need help, um, but you're not alone, but you need to step up and do something. So don't feel like you're going to put yourself out there and be shot down. Um, put yourself out there, be a leader, let people come in and follow you. Let people know where you stand, put your flag down. Um, I think is big. And um, you know, it's been one of the things that's been hard for me. I felt like, all of it, nothing matters. And, you know, you, you, you become numb to things, but there's no value in that. That's losing. And I don't think that this is an acceptable fight to take a loss. In. I don't know what else to say, guys. I mean, I don't know what else. I don't think there's a, there's no statute of limitations on what we can say, right? This is an ongoing conversation. And that is, in a my mind, sort of the point. A this conversation is the that shouldn't stop either, right? It's a conversation the that start. should be continued. And I think for you know everyone out there, remember, we've got platforms you can reach out to us on. You can tweet at us. You can DM any of us. But you can also email us. If you want to hear other stuff like this, if you need help in any way, if you think that this is something that we should be talking about, whatever it is, let us know. Or just tell us your experiences. And this, um, and this goes for players, fans, people in the front office, everybody. We want to hear what you think, your experiences, what you think is the best way to move forward. Yeah. Embrace being uncomfortable. I mean, that's, that's really the bare minimum that you can ask for from yourself. Be uncomfortable. Challenge yourself. Look through your life and, and catalog and say – uh, you know, that seemed like a normal uh, experience that I had. But, oh, wait, here are the undercurrents of the systematic racism that this country is, frankly, built on. The way it's always worked. The way it will continue to work. Unless we change things. Um, we'll talk about soccer again. You're, you're, you're looking at the news just like we are. It sort of feels, you know, pales in comparison, I would say. Um, 
But if and when there is a return to play for Major League Soccer, we'll be back with an emergency podcast. If it's, if it's not on a Thursday, we did not feel right about putting out a poll to ask you who the greatest team of all time in Major League Soccer is, so we didn't. And we won't, we don't, we're not going to talk about that right now. We already know uh, it's 2014 that will, Revs, so I think we've already decided yeah, that. That's, yeah. That's fair. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. 2014 <laughs> Revs. It, on, on Thursday, it'll be the 2012 Dynamo, but you didn't, you know, you, <laughs> oh, you didn't hear it. that okay. from me. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we have stuff in the mail. We have soccer to talk about, and uh, and we will. Um, but today, it's about self-examination. It's about looking at the country that you live in and, and saying, how can I make it reflective of my ideals, our ideals, and what we say we stand for? Lip service is over, uh, and this is just a start for us. Uh, you know, if you, if you have ways you think can be helpful, that we can help, we want that too. This is our community. I love coming on this show. This is the favorite thing I do. I say it all the time on this. It's a favorite thing I do professionally and sometimes personally, to be honest with you. These are my friends, my best friends. And to be here and share with you, that's that's the sort of community that matters. But we would not be here, and it would not mean what it means, and it would not have the gravity in our lives without the people who are on the other side. To all of you that are listening, who are thinking, who are internalizing this as well, who are going through the exact same things that, that we are right now, who are sort of either stuck in their emotions or feeling empowered or feeling down. It's all justifiable. It's all real. And that's ultimately what we want extra time to be. So any last thoughts, guys? Anything else? No, we're going to keep talking about this. So it's not an end. It's just we'll talk to you guys next time. Yeah. Yep. I'll end with this. I hope everybody out there is safe. Hope that your family is safe. Uh, I encourage you to to do what it takes to stay safe, but to make your voice heard and to demand the change that needs to that needs to happen in in our society. We, you know, we have a unique place, and many people before us have had that same place. And uh, I hope that we will be more effective, more dogged, and more demanding uh, than ever before to get the change that's needed. And and that's I'd, it from al- us. I'd also like to add hope. Don't don't let the darkness cloud the vision, which is. We move forward as as a as a country, as a society, as a society, not to give up hope. That's the worst thing we can do is is not believe that we can make progress, that we can change the way we've 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 been running this country, how we've been operating for from the start of the century, Ever. forever. So, don't give up that hope. Keep the keep the the faith. If, if, if there is ever a time that everyone needs to, to believe and, and, and use the, the power of, of faith, it's now. Well said. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Dave. Uh, should have made the bet about whether I'd cry on this show. I think I would have, would have won that, <laughs> won that bet, held it back for now, but uh, uh, don't be afraid to let your emotions come out either folks. That's what makes a special community. The people we love, And ultimately, let's love everybody. So we'll see you on Thursday, maybe sooner. TBD, if there's a return to play, we'll be back. Uh, Be safe. As Chuck said, have hope. And we'll see you around next time.